Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to this channel. Uh, my name is Christiana Davidson, and uh, you're so welcome here, whether it's your first time visiting, uh, if you're just passing through, or you've been here regularly, uh, you're all so welcome. And I do believe, you know, nothing happens by chance. I think we're all uh, meant to connect in some way. Um, so, um, as you know, my specialism is in, you know, the narcissistic family system and healing from that. Um, and, you know, today's video, it's a bit different from my usual, um, because part of my aim in this work is, you know, as much as there is need to call out uh, and make accountable for the wounds that we've received. Uh, there's also, part of the healing is also to be willing to take a hard, honest look at ourselves and the impact of this multi-generational disease of narcissistic tendencies that have come down through our family systems. Um, and that is the real work, to be honest. You know, yes, we have to call out and in some, you know, and blame, but there has to be a progress progression from that to um, a self accountability, um, because we can't spend the rest of our lives uh, pointing the finger, because none of us is perfect. And if you have been the child of a narcissistic family system, a narcissistic parent, you will have come out with narcissistic traits, at least. Uh, so today, this video is looking at what I would suggest is the number one impact uh, that we need to be aware of uh, as we heal. Uh, and it can be quite a, a sneaky impact, this one. So uh, we're going to cover, first of all, what this key area is. Uh, I'm going to explain it a bit more in terms of how it manifests in the, in the narcissistic parent and in previous generations. And then I'm going to explain how we need to look at it in our daily lives. And it is a daily practice, this, of being accountable. Um, and I'll give you some questions to answer at the end to help you reflect. Okay, so let's dive in, everybody. Um, also, please like this video um, if you do like it. Um, it's just that it helps me uh, to get a few more uh, views, <laughs> uh, to get me out there a bit more um, on YouTube. Okay. So... The number one impact uh, of the narcissistic parents upon children is pride. That's the trait that is most predominant, is the characteristic of pride. Um, now, the narcissistic parent or the narcissist is driven by the need for admiration and attention. They need to have other people look at them and be admiring. Um, that's the narcissistic supply that we talk about. And if they get lots of this out in public or on social media or at work, they feel a sense of self pride. That's what supply is. It's a self pride. That is what they seek. It's that feeling of self pride, which gives that boost to their self esteem. That's the supply they go looking for is pride. It gives them a one upness a feeling of being better than others, or at least some others. Narcissistic parents believe that one's value 
a person's value is in how much others admire them. And nothing is better for the narcissistic parent than when other people express their admiration. And they might do this not only through words, but through acts of subservience or, um, you know, looking at them in an idealized way. Uh, even giving them attention is a form of that, of them expressing their idealization of them. The narcissistic parent must be seen, must be seen by others. That's because that's attention and admiration. Either in a grandiose way, you know, uh, coming in and everyone giving them their attention because of how they look or, you know, the new handbag they've got or their loudness, their whatever it might be, or in the covert way, a hidden way, uh, which can be behind the scenes, uh, but often garnering sympathy, playing the victim or being the complaining one or um, spoiling things. The narcissistic parent has three main avenues for gaining this self-pride. Um, I've heard other um, experts in this area uh, speak of two. Um, they talk of the somatic and the cerebral area, but I'd like to add in, if I may, um, the, the spiritual area as well. So there's three main avenues for gaining self-pride, body, mind, soul. So the body is the somatic, they use their body to, their looks, to gain attention and admiration, attractiveness. Um, they, they focus on using the body to gain them self-pride, uh, to feel proud about themselves, um, to be better than others, um, to lure people with, um, to, uh, to be slimmer than everybody else. Um, to wear clothes that gain them this sense of self-pride, uh, that put them in a certain status quo. That's the somatic. Then we've got the cerebral, the mind. Um, the narcissistic parent gains attention and admiration through the intellect, through their knowledge. Um, on social media, posting lots of, I don't know, political statements or, you know, advice for people. Uh, they, they often belittle others' lack of intelligence. Um, they like to win at intellectual contests like quizzes or, you know, it's not just a game. It's a, they've got to prove themselves intellectually. Um, then we have the spiritual area. Um, and, you know, this is the soul area. Uh, seeking attention and admiration and pride uh, through the spiritual. So, you know, being holier than everybody else. Um, you know, presenting as this incredible healer. Um, doing lots of charity work, setting up charities. Uh, being in church and serving all the time um, and, and flaunting that, you know, really uh, getting something out of that uh, rather than it being a service, it's being served, strangely. Um, okay. So that's the narcissistic parent. Okay, now remember, you were raised by this sort of uh, worldview uh, by this moral code. So in healing, we have to undo this moral code, this worldview. So as children of this type of parent, you will have been nurtured in self-pride too, in one of those three areas, predominantly, usually. It's usually 
the area that is the opposite of the one in which the parent predominates so that you're not competition. This is not to say that the other two areas were not encouraged as well, they were. But you were praised specifically in one and told that you were better than others in this, pressured to be better than others in this area. There was regular affirmation of your betterness than others in this area. And you may have actually, truthfully, been gifted in this area, but it was nurtured in you as a means of outdoing others. So you could shine for all to see and thus bring narcissistic supply vicariously to your parent. It's all about shining. And you might hear, you know, an echo of our society uh, and what is what we're being told, you know, shine, shine, let your light be the biggest blasting light, you know. You know, don't let anyone take it from you. You, you know, <laughs> sounds a little bit like that narcissistic parent, if I may say. So you were taught to use your skills and talents to compete, to outdo others and to be special. Those are the values of the narcissistic parent. There was an unspoken pressure to use your talents for this purpose, to make your parent proud, to make yourself proud, but not to be proud of you really, but for them, to be proud of you was your reward because seeing their pride in you made you feel proud. And your parent relished it when other parents saw you win or outshine the other parents' children. It was all about pride. How can I get pride? How can others look at me with pride? How can I feel pride? This often exacerbates in the child the feeling of, on one hand, being known by their parent. Like, you know, my parent does know my skills. He, they are helping me develop them. And, you know, I am gifted in this. So they do really care about me and want me to progress. But on the other hand, of not really being known, of being used. <laughs> Uh, as an extension of them to gain supply, to gain pride. Your talents and skills are not about you, but about your parent. And what bonds you with your parent here is like a shared pride in you. <laughs> this makes you feel good about yourself too. Uh, and you're also pleasing your parent. So you were loved when you were bringing in pride and supply. And look, you know, this is where the narcissistic trait of pride for us all sets in. I would say every human being on the face of the planet needs to look at pride. But particularly if you come from a narcissistic family background. You know, the narcissistic family system fosters self-pride in us too. But what is this exactly and how do we heal from it? Well, pride is an excessive love and belief in one's own excellence. This is at the heart of narcissism and it's a trait we must all be willing to uproot if we truly wish to heal. So in the body, mind and soul areas, we will be prone to putting ourselves on a pedestal or believing we should be outshining others at this particular thing. 
or we we expect praise in a particular area. We demand that our way is right. We feel entitled to high regard. Um, we may expect top marks uh, when sometimes it's undeserved. Like, you know, you didn't get an A star on this. Uh, that's because the lecturer doesn't like me. So we go out into the world when we come from a narcissistic parent seeking self-pride because that's what we've been taught. We seek it above all else to, to have that feeling of self-pride. It's all about me. It's all about my feelings. Now, I come from a religious background a uh, Christian background and you know many of the other world faiths concur with this but you know pride uh, is the gateway they call it to the seven deadly sins it it is the key of the seven deadly sins and they don't call them deadly <laughs> for nothing I mean ultimately narcissism is is a, a death it, it's not a life life-giving it, it's about death and destruction. So if pride is at the heart of narcissism, well, <laughs> then it's quite clearly something we need to be um, willing to look at if we want life. So when you come from a narcissistic family system, we need to look at either overt pride or covert pride because pride comes in both ways. The first way, overt pride is that grandiosity I spoke about earlier, you know, expecting attention and admiration, putting, putting yourself above others, you know, expecting to be seated with this group, not that group, God. or uh, being desperate for status, you know, Oh, having to have this particular product because it, you know, with this label on it, because that means this in the eyes of the world, um, of rejecting or perceiving others as less than uh, or beneath you based on their appearance sometimes or their social status. It's looking for others to idealize you and make you feel idealized. It's that feeling of, you know, being driven to be idealized by another. And this can often play out in our romantic relationships. You know, we, we're still looking for that feeling of idealization from a narcissist. Um, and, and, and that's what keeps us going back sometimes. This overt pride is fame, fortune, success in the eyes of the world. That is the overt drive to pride and you know it's, it's it's interesting isn't it because if you look at social media uh you look at you know what what what's presented to us uh in this world it's all about this overt pride <laughs> you know seeking this out uh now the other other side of this pride is the covert type that's the hidden pride um the more cunning pride that gets in you know you may find that you do this that you proclaim yourself as less than others um you know living in fear of what others think uh this sort of oh i'm not worthy presentation you know others are but secretly hiding a deep resentment you know believing that actually you are deserving. It's just that nobody else sees it um, and that you're hard done by. It's hoping others will say, no, no, you are worthy. Come, you should be up here. You should, you know, let me, expecting others to make you the center of their world. Uh, overvaluing others' opinions in order to ensure your status. Uh, that you fit in with the status group. Uh, there's a tendency towards a negative outlook, focusing on the bad, being a victim of life. Um, 
feeling sorry for yourself. This is the covert pride. And why is it pride? Because it hides a deep envy, a deep resentment and a grandiosity of deserving better and being hard done by, by life. The others all have it better than me. So we have the three areas, body, mind, and soul, that we need to be aware of pride in. But pride comes in both the overt and the covert forms in each of those areas. Um, so what is the answer for us to this narcissistic trait that we will have, all of us have? Um, well, the answer to pride is the opposite, and that is humility, a humbleness, and a spirit of service. And I mean that even if you've been a people pleaser, because actually people pleasing is not about service. That's, that's still about trying to get your needs met. Hum humble service with your life to the world. Uh, now, here are some ways that, here are some questions rather, that might help you explore this a bit more um, in your own life. So one way of checking on your own pride is to sit down at the end of each day and just ask yourself, okay, where was I prideful today? In other words, where was I demanding that this person or this thing be different to what it is? Where was I vain about myself today? You know, where, where was I relying on my looks? Uh, where was I holding myself back because I don't feel I look good enough? Where was I holding myself back from showing up and being of service uh, because I wanted to stay in comfort? Where was I vain about my intellect? You know, stamping my opinion about something on someone else instead of listening? Where was I vain spiritually? Maybe showing off in my prayer group or telling somebody else what they should believe? Where was I needing to, to outdo another or put myself below someone else? Did I do that? Because we're all equal. You know, the putting yourself below others is a form of pride. Nobody's better than nor worse than anybody else. We've got to get away from idealizing or idolizing ourselves and others because that is pride. Did I spend a lot of time on social media looking for likes or was I resentful at what I was seeing in others post? Am I carrying a grudge still? Am I carrying secrets? Was I bossy? Was I resentful at others' good fortune? Did I gossip about others and put them down? Did I insist on having the final word? Did I show off in any way? You know, pride gets you to focus on yourself. That's what the narcissist does. That's what the nar narcissism is about. It's the focus on on getting my need on on selfish things although with the narcissist there is no self uh, some say it's all about how can i get what i want what i need to make myself feel better humility is stopping focusing on myself and my feelings and it's showing up and choosing to be of service in my life to others, of being able to see the other. It's no more feeling sorry for myself or like I've got to prove myself to the world. It's letting go of resentments. 
Pride is hidden within us. And it's hidden especially, and this is a difficult one, this, in your relationship with your narcissistic parent or partner. You see secretly, you see them as less than you and not worthy of forgiveness. But we fail to acknowledge that we also need forgiveness. And this is a difficult one, I know. But at the end of the day, this is the antidote to the pride of narcissism and the narcissistic traits that get passed down to us. And it is a journey. But ultimately, humility, being of service, and forgiveness of self and others is what sets you free. I hope this was helpful, everyone. I think it's so important, this work. You know, there's so much out there about what they've done to us. Um, and there's very little about, okay, self-accountability. Um, because as you know, with narcissism and na the narcissistic parent, there is no self-reflection. So if we want to, if we want to break this multi-generational disease, we've got to become self-reflective um, and make sure that, you know, we're not pointing the finger out there when there's two pointed back at us. Um, uh, so please, if this was helpful uh, or or not, you know, leave your leave your comments. I love to read them. I do try to respond to all of them. Uh, they're important to me. You are important to me, and um, I thank you uh, for your support of this channel. And do reach out to me if you'd like to work with me. Uh, my website is www.delightinyou.com. That's what it's all about: bringing light into you all the things of the light, not of the darkness. Take care, everyone. Bye now.